Hello, this is on the middle way, uh, number 10, on the imagination. So the middle way approach to the mind is always having a synthesis, an integration, and a commingling, you could say, of the main approaches and functions of the mind, uh, the way that the mind works. So thinking, emotions, feelings, imagination, and so on. So this is going to be mostly about the imagination and how there is a middle way approach within the imagination itself, as well as the bigger picture of the imagination and thinking and emotions all being in a creative relationship to each other. So on the, the, you could say, the unhelpful side of imagination that takes you away is a pure fantasy. Fantasy that actually usually is a story in some form that you live or in some way related to you uh, and in some way serves your sense of yourself either by aggrandizing yourself or diminishing yourself <coughs> but it's still about you and in this way you're caught up in a world which can be visual uh, not necessarily so but uh, it can be full of feeling and sense as well but the, when you're in a fantasy world you're definitely away you're away from being present, engaged, uh, absorbed in the process of noticing what's happening and uh, just generally being in a creative process. You could say, some people might say, that being in a fantasy is a creative process, but it's not in as much as it's disconnected from all the other main functions. Creativity and the creative process is an integrated process where all the functions come together. So in relationship to the unhelpful side of the imagination, it's, more to, it's quite interesting this area uh, and, and in a way there's a lot to it but I'm just going to touch on it. It's when one enters into the realm of archetypes, symbolism, uh, personal and in terms of the world and gets lost in the archetype. So you, you feel that you are an archetype. You are living an archetypal relationship and you lose contact with <coughs> your physical instincts and your thinking and your general uh, perception of what's happening because you're lost in what you feel is your process, but it's only in terms of archetypes. So the more useful middle way approach to the imagination in practice is I think primarily through metaphor. Metaphor gives you a picture of how you are, where you are, what's going on. And to develop the language of metaphor is to enter into the middle way and to, because it's very practical, it gives you a sense of what's here and what's needed rather than taking you away from what's here and what's needed or having a, a very particular sense of what's here that is only part of the picture. So, for example, a very useful way of entering into being uh, familiar with the metaphoric way of relating to yourself is to periodically just ask for an image of what is going on here. What is the situation? What, if it was a picture, what would it look like? And it could be something from nature. It could be a thing. Uh, I think that when one is starting to explore 
the positive use of imagination through metaphor using water images is the most useful. So asking something like, if at the moment I'm water, what kind of water am I like? And being open to a water image whatever that is, and you get a sense of does it fit how you are, your energy, your mood, the way that you're uh, being focused or broadly experiencing yourself. So what it does is that it gives you a picture of how you are, which allows you to have a sense of what's needed. So there might then be a conscious adjustment or even just uh, uh, an internal, almost intuitive adjustment. Oh, so I'm all frothy, calm. That calm might come from uh, thinking or it might just come intuitively. Oh, I need, this needs to happen, I need to calm, go deeper. And then the next time you ask for a water image, it could well be quite different. It could be in much more uh, expansive like a, a vast lake or ocean with a sense of brightness.